It resumes about 1.2 books in their course. Ilang libro ang ginagamit mo? Amen. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. Do you still prescribe a textbook? I don't. A textbook for me in my field will be at least two years old. Textbook copyright 2014 will have been written two years ago and I am in IT. What is technology two years ago? It's already obsolete. Okay. So we no longer prescribe textbooks. Okay. What we prescribe are topics, okay. sites, okay. portals that our students can refer to. Okay. Why? Kasi yun na update. Yung textbook okay, will be there for. After that, you know, it goes, it's obsolete even before you start using it. Okay? So, try to have a textbook as your base, okay? but don't prescribe it. Okay? And also, don't try to make it as your Bible that you cover from, finish from cover to cover. <coughs> You'll have to be selective on what it is important. Okay? But make sure that you don't stay with that okay? and go through the rest of the month. Okay? It is called mashing up. Okay. To build your confidence, you have to look at websites, you look at cloud sharing, okay, multimedia applications, and apps. Yung mga nandyan sa mga iPhones nyo, iPads nyo, and you know, your, your, your small smartphones. Okay. Those are the things that we actually use. Uh, so, Here's where we bring the second shift. Stop teaching the book. And become a real expert in your field. <coughs> a lot of you are still parrots. Right? Paroting what is there in the book. Okay. Kung elementary yan, fine. Okay. But once you reach the higher education level, then you really have to really become experts in your field. And becoming an expert now is not that easy because things change so fast. Okay. But you don't have a choice. If you want to stay in this you know, profession, okay, you will just simply have to keep on. Okay. Kasi nga, your students keep on learning. Okay. And they're becoming very good at it. Um, so question. Who works in the classroom <coughs> the hardest? Huh? <laughs> well, teacher. in a Teacher centered university, the teachers are working harder than the students. Uh, too much time is prepared, that uh, is spent in preparing lectures, like you show me exams, and the one that you gave so much is really good. Believe it or not, I handled five courses this year. I finished my grades in an hour and a half this morning. Why? I, 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 I went through my, my, my student uh, uh, portfolio. That's what they submitted to me. Okay, physical. Okay. Sometimes they submit them to me at 12 midnight on a Sunday. One night. Right? 
and I would give comments on their individual work for everybody else to see. And that makes a hell of a difference. Okay. Um, and students should be doing <coughs> more real world work. Okay. Um, shift three then means you talk less. Okay. Yun ang favorite nyo kasi naging nagawa dun sa ano yun. Nagmumonolog. <laughs> right? Okay. And provide more learning opportunities. See? I knew this before. But I was labeled to be a very basic teacher at the end of the day. Hindi naman natutunan niya. But what I do was, is provide learning opportunities for my students. In fact, I just gave a, presented a paper on its formative learning. And what we showed there was, you only spend 20% of the time in the classroom. Or students spend 20% of their time in the classroom. And 80% of the time learning by doing projects outside. Um, so the role of the teacher, okay, is as follows. You do not have to know everything. Because you will never know. It's growing. And more importantly, you do not have to teach everything. That's why deadlines in there. Try to have a curriculum and you try to stick to it. You know, like a Bible. I don't know. In fact, the, the syllabus for me oftentimes is FYI. I shift in the middle of the term depending on what I think the students need. If I feel that I have to emphasize in certain things, then I stay more. Otherwise, you know, I just move on. I have a very good excuse. Please read the Bible. Required reading. I don't want to insult your intelligence by parroting this one to you. If any questions, just ask. That's what I think. But you will only have the guts to say that. If you are certain you can answer every question that your student will throw. It's easier said than done. <coughs> but you will do that only, or you can do that only, if you are confident in your hearing, then you are confident to say that to your students. So that's the challenge. Make sure you'll be ready to answer any question under the sun that they will talk. Then you can become a very expert. So you can choose alin ba ang mas importante para sa kanila. Okay? Okay. You design opportunities for learning. Okay. Like contests, we do run internal contests among our students. Okay. He ran here would run a, we teach a flash. We run flash contests. Zero ang pinakamagaling. Anyway, the, the topic today is to animate this thing. Okay. We run a small contest for next week. Okay. Who will be the best person who can animate that? So what happens? They'll be forced to learn a few other tricks more than what the others can do. And then more they'll always be okay, more than willing to be present in the class. So you create small competitions and then reward them with badges. We, we run Ironman competitions in the classroom. And that runs for the entire time. So, we are not that boring to the classroom. So, we are not that boring, simple, now I, that's where I live. Simple, the two of us are the students. If you look at the picture, you can see that you can see that. We don't want that. I, in fact, I hate seeing that. 
Okay? I want the students to always be involved and active. Okay? Um, so, question is, uh, okay, okay, let the students do the actual learning. So, the design opportunities, sila ang matutupo. Okay? Uh, one example I give um, for the transformative learning is that I teach a video production course. And video production, so we just show them the video and so on, right? Um, but I give a twist. I work with Tesla, and I'm doing the e-learning at Tesla. So what I did was I told Tesla, I will commit my students to do the five-minute videos for this training. So my students will have to go to Tesla, learn the, the, write the script, do the shoot, edit. Okay? And there's one major reward. You, five minute video na ginawa nyo will be uploaded and part of the real e-learning portal of Tesla. And will be viewed by a few million people and will help. Okay? few million out of school do on how to do so. A real project, they very much motivated. Okay. They will not simply learn how to shoot, 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 but they will go there, work with talents, learn the topic, and they are contributing something to themselves. <coughs> That's the kind of real project that I ask this to do. Okay. And I am confident that you know the small I know that we're teaching them, then they'll be able to really push them. At the end of the day, ang reaction nila, Sir, ang hirap pa kang mag-ibig kung mag-uusap ng atin, ang hirap pa kang adjust ang ilaw and so on. Okay, take two kayo. Take three kayo. Okay. Our league, our uh, highest is take 32. 32 takes for one single night. Did they learn? Yes. The hard way? Yes. Did they forget it? Never. That's a learning experience. So, question. Does the class size matter? Huh? What's your ratio? 160. 1 to 20, 40, 60. 160. Well, I've been spoiled. So all the courses I give are 20 minutes. Okay, at 60, you need to have 40. Okay, and how could you expect to be learners? So you will have to find creative ways. I mean, this is beyond you. Okay. But if the school really wants to go to the center, you will have to deal with that okay. and go for a lower student ratio. It's the only way you will be able to play a part of it. That's a sad thing. So the target is to go 20 for less. Now, how feasible will that be? I don't know. Okay. How creative can you be? It's possible. Okay. Make arrangement that you meet a student group of 40 twice in just half hour, half hour. Hindi naman yung class size yung libre. Ang importante is the meeting that you have. Okay. Believe it or not, you know, I lecture maybe three times during the term. Okay. So just at the start, oftentimes it's a show. The rest of the term, meet, you come first 15 minutes, I talk to your group next 15 minutes, next 15 minutes, next 15 minutes. I still could manage, you know, a small teacher to student ratio. Okay? But at a certain point, I ask everybody to come and I start criticizing their work so that everybody can hear everything that. So you just have to creatively find ways to make that student ratio smaller. Okay. 
Kasi ang, ang ano nyo is your box. 1 to 4, 1 to 40, I need to have all this 40 at the same time. Why don't you have the 20 in the first hour, the next 20 in the next hour? Make it smaller. First 20, 10, 15 minutes. Next 10, 15 minutes. Next 10, 15, 15. You get a smaller class of student Important is the quality time that you spend with your students. Okay? Um, last item. Okay. Requires a change in the curriculum. Uh, schools teach, yeah, I think you heard that before, you know, curriculum from decades, right? Um, sino ang nagtuturo sa inyo or using the same textbook that you are using or you are studying? Uh, yung mga unforgettable na mga authors na, no, I see the same or that the teachers of the day are using. You can use them as references. But okay, to make that the same book, no, it's, it's not the same thing that okay. So, uh, the goal of education is to enrich the life of students while producing articulate, expressive thinkers and lifelong learners. That's a very big goal. That's a millennium goal of the UNESCO. Okay that are socially responsible, resilient, and active citizens of the world. Education about teaching students and not teaching subjects. You still teach them. Subject is always very important. Now, we are teaching students. Your content will have to adjust every time to the capacity of how your students will be. Okay? Uh, we have currently very much content-based courses. CM, I E, whatever, and all that. Okay? Um, oftentimes, you know, teachers focus on covering that content. And too much student resort to just memorize. Ano yung alam niya ang resulta nito? Surface learning. Which is that? What happens to the bigger blue? What we call that? Kung surface yan, tawag lang din dyan is what we want the student to achieve. To be able to understand, identify, explain, apply. Are we trying to do that? Mm -hmm. Yes and no. Pero yung explain nila at identify nila still on paper during the exam. Not identify, explain to you Okay. And then you can do corrective measures afterwards. Okay. I really torture my students to explain to me in my research courses. Explain to me your theoretical framework. And you know how I define it? Okay. If you can tell me what you will do, okay. or if you can explain what you are doing to your mother, you pass the mother's test and you get a simple theoretical framework. Pag ikaw lang nakakaintindi, then you don't have a framework for Right? So, okay, deep learning okay, um, is what we want to achieve. And the reason why I'm presenting this to you is because okay, there is really a growing interest in the student-centered paradigm in the country. In fact, 
the sound pick here in the box like this. Now, you have an even bigger shoe to fill. And this is the outcomes-based education from OVI. Which you will have to comply to soon. Okay. Have you had your OBE training? Yes. Okay. And this is what exactly is it for. Okay. When you go OBE, then okay, you will really have to look into the deeper learning to understand the application of what you're um, so, okay. content base is focused on knowing, and that's teacher center, right? Outcomes base is really focused on doing. Diba yun ang main ano? And that is learner center. Okay? So, what you really want to achieve is to have a learner center in life. Um, the shift four then is okay, don't cover content. Okay, make the students competent. Last item is okay, on the assessment. Well, again, is a very problematic area. Okay, because for so long, even up to now, many of you put emphasis on the grades rather than learning. And your students too. Diba? Para lang pumasa. Just to make it, just to get the grade, just to finish college, just to that has always been the attitude. That is because that is what you feel. Uh, my students don't. They don't come for the attendance. They don't come for the grades. They have learned. Well, during the first time they're with me, they're shocked. But after that, they have learned that what is more precious is the actual learning that happens. Um, so, what do we assess? Okay. <laughs> what they know, what they can do, right? What does a grade tell us? What they know, what they can do. And then you give them a what? What about grading system you do? Four three to one, four the highest. Oh, no, that's interesting. Okay. Um, but let, let's just have a very few you know, um, reflection. Okay. Uh, let me ask this question: Why do we assess? What may exam, may quiz, may anyway? Like ito yan, you, know? you have this syllabus, you teach this, 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 and then you have <coughs> quiz, right? Those who come from normal schools, they swear by that, you know, kailangan. Even that, no, you have, we are prescribed to have so many quizzes, so on, so on, so on. So what are you, exactly are you assessing? You are assessing how much did I teach if they know? Right? Is that right? Yes. I want you to change your perspective. Okay? It's not this, but this. I want you to think about assessment, about see to see are they ready for the next step? Mm. All the board exams, okay, the bars and so on, 
yung final bore or final bar niya is really intended to check. Pwede ka na bang maging manggamot? Pwede ka na bang magtayo ng bahay? That's what assessment should be about. Ang problema sa atin, we assess what was previous. We should be assessing their readiness to perform the next task. You might be giving the same thing, but you're doing it for a different reason now. Right? So when you mark it here, will they be ready for the next one? If I pass them now, will they be made ready for the next accounting course, for instance? If we keep that as a perspective, then we have started looking into okay, the real needs of what your students are, rather than do they remember what I just gave them. Problema lahat tayo, ganun kasi naputo. Diba? That's why, if comes may quarter exam dito for midterms. Kam midterm, hanggang dito lang matapos ko, I will have an exam only of that coverage. And your students will ask, mama ng coverage sa exam. See? So we're assessing for the wrong reason. We should be assessing their readiness to follow the next set of lessons. And what do we assess now? It's no longer what they know. Okay, we have to start looking up, assessing their performance. Okay. Um, this is not the time for it. Okay, we probably would have some okay, other sessions on how we can actually do that. But if you ever heard of the word rubrics, for instance, this is where they all come in. Okay. In my lectures, I've seen that one of the most common mistakes is that they use rubric to assess output wrong. You use rubric to assess performance as a formative evaluation. Okay. Uh, so let me share you now what I do. Okay. So don't get shocked if you hear my grading system. Okay. I only give a four, a zero, and a one. Uh, then I have to admit that I had a few legal cases at Lasal, parents complaining, you know, filing legal suits, asking for, you know, preventive suspension and so on for me, but I don't care. We have what we call academic freedom, guys. And then my lawyers told me that. It's academic freedom, you can do whatever you want. So, that's what I do. But I give a zero, if they did not learn. <laughs> I give a one if they learn, but they could not apply. Oh, tinuro ko, I give multimedia courses. So, oh, they can, ano, the multimedia principles and so on. Nasi lang magawa, decent na multimedia application. Kahit na may sinabit ka sa akin, if you do not even know how to use a proper font and color combination, you still get the one. Why? You cannot apply the children. What about the two and three? I don't care. As <laughs> you learn, because if you can apply, then you can apply. That, that, that's, that's how I do my okay, learning grading. Uh, so my focus is really on how they can apply. Okay. And sometimes I get to be a bit more than me. 20% big to 80%. Okay. It's an but there's really no mercy. What, what's the point? Okay. If my course asks them, can you build a course where and they cannot build one. Okay. They can apply multi-video principles, but they cannot build one. Because I need that as a project of their own. You have to be able to do it. Not halfway. Okay. 
But most of you are so lenient. Yeah, I give a look for the effort. <laughs> Bullshit for the effort. They did not learn. Now we have to keep that if you go, want to go for OBE and outcomes based education. There is no such thing as A for effort okay, and B for the output. <laughs> right? If you want to read the standards, guys, that's the only way to do it. But with this position, I only have two types of students those who love me and those who hate me. <laughs> Right? Those who love me, they really know they learned something, they know that they can have some dream with it, something happened. Those who just want to you know, get the grade, okay, they hate me. Sir, may nagawa naman, may nasabit ako, humanin naman sila kay po eh. Right? You just have to stick with it. You know, you want to keep the standards of this. Okay, so, the 2080, tells us that, you know, quizzes are still okay. okay. Uh, to test basic concepts, okay. but they have very little weight. Uh, um, the AP is really about what authentic assessment is. And it's on the performance, and it's improving performance by giving feedback. This is where formative evaluation comes in. Okay. Uh, we do not need to assess only at the end of the course. Verdict yan ang tawad yan. Okay. We need to assess from start to end. Okay. And this is what we refer to as formative assessment strategies. So I'm just giving you the basic concepts. Now, perhaps, you know, okay, some people from your education will probably shed more light into it with your other okay, seminars. So the shift we really are talking about is stop testing students, but start forming. Okay. So before we end, let's just do a quick recap. Um, Shifting from a learner center to a learner center university requires four uh, several shifts. Okay, one is on the student. Stop teaching them start. as kids and start teaching them as adults. Second shift: okay. stop teaching the book and then become a real expert in learning. Third shift, talk less, provide more learning opportunities. Four, don't cover everything. You provide seeds of spark or inspiration, get your students to the rest. I call it hand holding strategies. Hold their hand at the start and then the end. Okay. Make the students and then finally, stop testing students and 